Throughout the history of the technology industry, there have always been data management companies that lock customer data into their proprietary systems and then tax these customers, the real owners of the data, for data usage. Imagine receiving the keys and moving into your new apartment that has many amenities. All goes well until you receive your monthly bill. On top of the lease amount, you're charged every time you use the amenities that came with the apartment beyond the specified but impractical limits. For example, when you store more groceries in your fridge than the stipulated amount, you are taxed with overages. Data warehouse companies are a classic example of a proprietary system designed to levy a hidden tax to customers. Once customer data is locked in, the data warehouse tax works in three ways. First, proprietary storage. Data warehousing systems store data in their proprietary storage. This means you unnecessarily pay them to import and export data to and from open source data processing frameworks for tasks like streaming analytics and machine learning. Second, fixed workflow. Data warehouses force SQL-based data processing for all workloads. However, machine learning and streaming analytics require programmatic, distributed data processing frameworks like Apache Spark and TensorFlow, and languages such as Python, Java, and Scala to do continuous data engineering. Since data warehousing tools are built for reporting and analysis, you have to manually stitch several tools, build, maintain, and test proprietary custom software scripts regularly using workstation-based containers. This results in cumbersome and convoluted architectures that not only make the job harder, but are also costly and require additional security and compliance work. For example, Running an Apache Spark job from a data set in a data warehouse requires the data warehouse connector for Spark or a JDBC driver. The connector exports the data to populate the Spark data frame from a table in the data warehouse. After processing, it will be used to write the results in the Spark data frame back to a table in the data warehouse. Now, this import-export process and its associated overhead is not necessary in an open data lake platform like Qbowl because Apache Spark simply reads the necessary data directly from the data lake, processes it, and then persists the desired result set in the same open storage. Data movement and sequential ETL make sense for business intelligence workloads. However, organizations need just-in-time and iterative data engineering for machine learning and streaming analytics. Finally, we have standardized ETL and switching costs. The largest data warehouse tax is levied when you want to switch out of it. Bulk export of big data that results in an additional billing overhead. These companies control how you store and extract your data. And this means you have to move data into the data warehouse even if the data is already in your cloud object store, resulting in unnecessary storage cost. Data warehouses enable fast, complex queries across historical structured data. For example, a retailer can understand which products have sold well in a particular region. Data lakes, on the other hand, focus on workloads such as data engineering, streaming analytics, and machine learning on structured, unstructured, and semi-structured data. Think social streams and IoT sensor data. Data lakes store data in an open format, accessible through open standards-based interfaces in multiple engines such as Spark, Hive, and Presto. Qbowl's Open Data Lake Platform natively supports technologies that data scientists and data engineers use today for machine learning, such as Python, Java, Scala, R, open source frameworks such as Airflow and TensorFlow, and engines such as Spark, Hive, and Presto. So don't put all your data into a data warehouse and fall into vendor lock-in. Build a modern data platform that combines the power of a data warehouse and a data lake.